my name is Mark Reynolds. I'm the owner of the Country Meat Shop along with my wife, Lara. It is in Mobley, Missouri. You know, our business uh, structure is set up as an LLC owned by myself and my wife, Lara. We manage the business together as well as our one longtime employee, Alan Carter, who takes care of all of our fresh meat cutting and assists in all of our processed product meat production. I am a fourth generation meat processor specializing in ham, bacon, and sausage products that have won over 100 awards, which consist of five overall Missouri Cured Meat Championships, one American Cured Meat Championship, two Cured Meat Championships Best of Show awards, and several international gold medal winners. We are a full service retail operation offering all in house made hams, bacon, and sausage products, as well as a full line of premium fresh meat cuts of pork, beef, and chicken. All of our products are sold to the end customer. We also do deer processing of whole carcass deer, as well as make 12 varieties of venison specialty products for that part of our operation. We offer several meat bundle packages, but also we offer our custom, customize your own meat bundles. This has been extremely popular as our customers are given a list of items available and they're given the freedom to choose what they want to bundle with a minimum of a $100 purchase. We've had the bundles from the very beginning of our operation originally moved to move our excess items, but now with our increased customer base, we usually have to cut the order. One thing that we are looking at doing is because we have had huge growth and we've had double digit growth every year since we've been here, some of the items we offered early on that we discontinued, um, we will probably be reintroducing in the next year or two as time permits because our customer base is so much larger. Our business as far as employees is myself and my wife, and we have one full-time person and two part-time employees. During deer season, we have a team of about a dozen of the most reliable, hardworking people there are. Most of them uh, come in on the weekend and the evenings and, even, and a few of them even take vacation from their regular jobs. So our deer season help has, uh, has evolved over time because the business uh, started out in 2006. Uh, we only did deer. It was kind of a part-time deal. We weren't open currently at our, with our retail store. So a lot of it was friends and people we knew and, and a few family members. And it's just evolved over time. We pick up one or two here and there. And I think the first couple of years we did in the 250 to 300 range of deer. And now we're at over 850 deer with another 400, uh, what we call boneless carrying tickets that people debone themselves. And each year we've uh, been able to improve our process, add equipment to make it easier. And every year our whole group, they just love to come back because they know that we're going to make it easier for them each year when they come back. We've got a new toy or a piece of equipment that they don't have to work nearly as hard. So those first few years, we'd leave here midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Now we walk out here doing probably three times to four times as many deer some years at eight, nine o'clock in the evening. So it's, it's made a huge, huge difference. And it's been we've been able to keep all those guys. As far as labor, as a rule of thumb, we invest in equipment as much as possible. Our facility has state-of-the-art equipment, including automatic vacuum stuffer, a Rostock packaging machine. Last week, we installed a vacuum tumbler mixer, which is going to allow us to do, uh, instead of a 200-pound batch at a time, we can do a 400-pound batch. We've been filling the gaps with you know part-time people in between of the, the time that we can actually justify buying a equipment that will actually uh, speed up our process. We recently uh, put in a horizontal uh, slicer for slicing bacon, which used to just take us forever to slice bacon. And now that's not going to become an issue. Uh, we can have, we'll have more trouble getting it scaled than we will getting it sliced. As far as the size of our facility, we currently have about 7,200 square feet of building and approximately three acres land that we are located just off of Highway 63 on the outer road in Mobley. 
the, the, the location of our business really helps drive the business because we are so visible from the four lane highway. The change of the exterior of our business has really helped stimulate the growth we feel. Just seeing the store, the, the appearance of the store, and we actually we're working on improving that. We're doing a full remodel in here in 2021 to just improve it that much more. As we make improvements to our, our facility, we feel it invites more and more travel, travelers uh, to stop in. All of our items sold are currently out of a retail store. Our typical customer that we have at the Country Meat Shop uh, is not really a typical customer because we have uh, regular customers of all ages, young, elderly, and everywhere in between. We have customers that do their weekly shopping with us, customers traveling through, and customers buying for special occasions. We have acquired quite the range throughout the state and uh, have products traveling to other states on a regular basis kids and friends that visit local locally try our product and then request care packages delivered to them when the local folks visit them we are in the process of setting up an online store and with that we will ship nationwide to individual customers our online store is uh we're hoping to get that set up hopefully by the end of 2021 if not sometime early 2022 we are only offer a limited item selection. We're going to only offer the mainly the uh, processed uh, cooked products. We don't plan on doing any like fresh meat, steaks, burger, uh, as they will not ship very well uh, in the frozen cooler boxes. We have a huge uh, deer business with over 1,300 customers each year. A lot of those deer customers are uh, potential web customers. We get a lot of customers that uh, come in for the deer deer business that before they leave, uh, they've either been in two or three times during the week or before they uh, leave to go back home or during deer season, they come and stock up as well as when they come back, if they have to come back and pick up specialty products, they load up on all of our own process uh, items that we make for the retail shop. One thing our business does differently, we feel that it's top quality products. We strive to offer the best quality and the most flavorful meat products out there. I'm the fourth generation in the meat business, so I grew up in a packing plant. My experience outside the family meat business was key. I saw a lot of what to do right and what went wrong. I believe my strengths were developed throughout every one of my endeavors in the meat industry. Products Consistency and quality, as well as food handling, had to be absolutely the number one priority. So our product quality is basically driven by myself, and we have the one full-time employee that's been with me from the very beginning. And we are just very uh, particular about what we do, and I oversee everything. Since we are such a small operation, I am involved in uh, making all the products, so... Um, we just try to improve upon the process if we see a room for improvement, whether it be uh, tweak the formulation or uh, buy a piece of equipment that improve the uh, the product. Um, that's what we always do. One thing we always do is we always run the same batch size, same uh, smokehouse load size. That way, if we do ever have an issue, it's not because we made a half batch of something or cooked a half batch in the smokehouse and can't figure out why it didn't turn out. For six years, I worked for the Oscar Mayer Company in Columbia, Missouri. The reason for going there, we had a packing plant here in Mobile, Missouri, and my parents owned it at the time, and we had a fire, which completely put it out of business. Originally, I was only, I believe, 21 at the time, so I was fairly, fairly young. My brother and I both went there, uh, worked in production, and was less than six months. We were both uh, promoted to supervisors. They were putting on a new addition, uh, which was coming about a year later. So since they were doing their addition, they actually hired uh, supervisors for the, for the new expansion early on. So they put us through a lot of training. Uh, we went to Wisconsin to their corporate headquarters and got a lot of training from uh, food safety to uh, food science. This was a game changer for me. The knowledge I acquired 
from such a brand was invaluable. Getting outside of the old way of doing things and learning practices, processing procedures, safety was a huge part of this uh, success I have attained. Just the, the resources they have to put for, forth, uh, making the product a consistent product every time that you make it was the main thing that I pulled from uh, working with the company. I would recommend anybody that had kids that were wanting to come back to their company and, and work for the for the family business to definitely try to go outside and work for a, a big company, uh, preferably food manufacturing, just to see how those companies do what they do. So on com- consumer preferences, they, they have evolved over time, but due to ex- our experience in the industry, we have a good idea what will sell and what wouldn't. One thing we have been surprised, the willingness to pay for uh, the consumers for, for a superior product. I had my doubts at first about offering prime steaks, but found my customers are looking for this type of quality. Generally, we don't try to chase some of the trending things. My brother and I have always talked about the, there's only been a few things in the in the food industries that changed over the last 40 years. Basically, people eat the same thing now that they did 40 and 50 years ago. They eat ham, bacon, sausage, and lunch meat. And so we try to stick with those types of items. Being in a small community, I provide product for many of the school concession stands. I'm on the fundraiser cards sold by the schools in all the surrounding towns. So this has brought in a lot of new customers in over the years. And one of the other things, sadly to say, that stimulated a lot of growth for us was the COVID. People in, in a panic that hadn't been in our store before came in to stock up their freezers. Um, we didn't miss a beat during the pandemic and continued to offer top quality at the best possible prices. With the COVID uh, issue going on, like I said, we saw a lot of new customers coming in first time customers and we always tried to do when they come in if they were trying to you know buy ground beef for their freezer we'd always try to get them to buy some of our processed products since we've had won so many awards it kind of you know validates the quality of the and the flavor and and the, the product and next thing you know you'll see those same people coming back in but they're not buying the fresh meats they're buying hot dogs hams and bacon um, we just see it time and time and time again People would walk in, and when we first opened, they would uh, buy, you know, burger, steak, what have you. Now they just come in buy either a package of two of bacon or, and hot dogs, or just our summer sausage or snack sticks. Um, so we became a uh, a source for their uh, their processed products, not just their fresh meat products. Some of the key factors that are relevant to the meat industry is that the small meat processor has made a big comeback. It's not our job to offer uh, top quality products and top quality service along with fair prices to stay relevant. Folks are ready to get back to that small town feeling of doing business and the local meat market is exactly that.